So I wanted to take an opportunity to talk to you face to face. How do I? There's a lot of turbulence right now going on in the Catholic online world. I say in the online world because in the day to day, in the pews, these conversations aren't really happening. There's kind of controversy going on in the radical traditionalist and traditional conservative Catholic side of things, where they're upset at Pope Francis in the magisterium and the senates that are going on. The, when I go to church, I'm not seeing people debating this. I have seen a few priests bring it up, but the priests bring it up in the homily and it passes on. It just kind of goes. That doesn't mean that there's not an issue. I, I don't want to say that there's not. But for my audience and for the people who have come to me because they're atheist or they're Muslim, I know there's maybe a few Wiccans also that watch my channel. Where do I stand in all this controversy? Because obviously I'm not a big channel, you know. So let's break it down. I assent to the Pope. I believe the Pope is the mouthpiece of the church. And as the mouthpiece of the church, he is the servant of servants there to serve other bishops. I believe that each bishop is in charge of his own diocese and that the priest under him are representing the bishop and the bishop is representing the Pope and the Pope is speaking for the church. He is a representative of the church and a representative of Peter. Rome was founded by two apostles, Peter and Paul, and their foundation comes from their martyrdom. There was a church before there, probably a communal church or a council of, of church members, including some very powerful and famous women. And then after in Peter and Paul's death, uh, that became their apostolic seat, specifically the apostolic seat of Peter. Peter has founded other churches, such as Antioch. I don't deny the biblical history. I don't deny the ecumenical history. The Orthodox Church has a really good understanding of the 70 that were sent out and has a really good understanding of the early church. I don't deny any of that. I also respect Pope Francis, and I respected the Pope before him. The Pope before him, I didn't like some of the changes that that Pope made. I didn't like the changes to the Mass. Just to be very blunt about it, I liked the mass that I grew up doing in the 80s. I wasn't going to leave the church because of that. And the rad trads were happy to have the Latin mass that practices a high mass. They liked that. But the Pope has the right to make a decision. The bishop of your diocese has the right to make decisions, including on which masses they offer, based on availability, based on who's attending, all that kind of stuff. Demographics, man. But there is dogma. So there's never going to be women priests just there's not there may one day be women deacons because in the bible there are deacons deaconesses and they're mentioned there are also in some of the church documents mention of high-ranking women what do we do with that that's pre-medieval church documents you're gonna have to do something with that if you're gonna say that the office has been closed fine if you're going to say that that office should be reopened or that it was never official, but it should be made official, that's up to the Pope to decide. That's up to the Synod to decide. That's up to the next council to decide, the next ecumenical council, whenever that should be. And whatever decision they make, it's fine. Either we believe that the Catholic Church is the church founded by Jesus Christ, and we believe that the Pope is infallible, or we don't. If the Pope is not infallible when he's speaking from the seat, then you are no longer a Catholic, period. I don't care how many Latin masses you attend. You're not a Catholic if you don't ascend to the Pope, period. There's no way around that. Well, then you say, well, what about him reaching out to the LGBTQ community? Whatever other letters you want to add. It is a church's job to reach out to sinners, including you, including me. It doesn't matter what their identifying marker is. It doesn't matter if they're Roman or Greek, Japanese or Native American. It doesn't matter if they're gay, straight, bi pan, poly, you name it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're Wiccan, if they're a Satanist. It doesn't matter if they're an atheist. It doesn't matter if they're a cradle Christian or a cradle Catholic. The church's job is to evangelize and reach out to them and to give them the good news that Jesus died for their sins, to come and follow him and change their ways. That's the job. That's it. That's the message. The message is not condemnation. It's not judgment. In fact, it explicitly says that those who judge bring judgment upon themselves. Your job is to outreach. That's your job. Only Jesus judges. Only God can judge, not you. Your job is just to simply preach the message and see if anyone wants to come in and see if anyone will follow. And our job is not to separate the wheat from the weeds. That's not our job. The Bible's very explicit on that. So don't do it. I get it. 
I really do. And I know that everyone from Vortex to Brian Hallsworth to a Reason in Theology, I think Michael Lofton to Tyler Marshall to whoever else you can think of, they're all involved in this argument. That's not the job, man. The job is not politics. God's kingdom is not of this earth. That is not God's kingdom. Stop acting like it is. God's kingdom is in heaven. Remember that. Remember who you are as a Christian. You're going to be hated. You're going to be persecuted. So what? God loves the poor. He's not telling you to be rich financially. He's not telling you to be wealthy. He's not telling you to have a million followers or a million subscribers. He's not telling you to go be popular on TikTok or YouTube or to have a successful apostolate or whatever else it is you think you're doing. That's not what God's calling you to do. He's calling you to give up all that you own and follow him. Everything. Give it to the poor and follow him. That's the poor in spirit or the financially poor or however else you can be in poverty. God loves the poor. God loves the suffering. God desires your broken heart and true contrition and desires you to change. So, yeah, I'm Catholic. Yes, I trust Pope Francis because he's the Pope, because I believe in the Holy Spirit, because I believe in the gifts endowed by the Holy Spirit, because I trust God, and because I trust Jesus, and because I trust their words, and because I'm a sinner. I'm a wicked, evil sinner just like everyone else, and I need forgiveness just like everyone else, including the Pope. The Pope needs forgiveness and mercy and compassion. And so do you, Tyler. So do you, Brian. You love to go out and judge Muslims, Wiccans, you love to judge the LGBTQ community. You love to tell Native Americans that they're wrong for their fears. Okay, so they're wrong. So those graves didn't have bodies in them. That doesn't undo the wrong and the harm that was done to them by Christians. Just because this one fear ended up being unfounded, the actual things that were done to them were really done to them. Those cultures really were stripped to bear. Those documents really were burnt and will never come back. For a long time, people thought that the Native American and Mesoamerican culture didn't have writing. It's only recent that they found out that they did. It was just the Spaniards destroyed it all. Catholics went about destroying the Norse cultures. There's a very famous story about us cutting down one of their sacred trees. Yet when we watch the TV and we see Muslims doing the same to ancient heritage sites, we know now that that was the wrong thing to do. But we did it once. And it's okay to apologize for that. It's okay to say that our ancestors got it wrong on this one aspect, but they got it right on faith. Yeah, they got their actions wrong, but they didn't get their faith wrong. The rich burnings were wrong. They were. The Crusades had terrible after effects. The Inquisition had to be reformed to a non-physical, non-violent version of it for it to be right. And that's only assuming that what we understand right now is correct. A hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, we might have a different understanding as a church. And as I said earlier today under someone's comments, remember that once the church woke up to find herself Arian, and it was only with time that she shook that off and found herself to remain true to the dogma and Arianism to disappear. We as individuals and as a group make mistakes but we are members of God's church and we are forgiven and we should extend that forgiveness to others. I just wanted to make that clear. I just wanted to put out there where I stand on all the controversy that's going on. I stand with the church because I love the church. And even when I haven't loved the church, the church has loved me because God has loved me and the church does God's will, not the will of man. Men make mistakes. Men kill innocent people and call them witches. Men harm God's people and exile them from their lands and call for programs. They hurt men, women, people, hurt Jewish people, hurt Muslim people. God is a God of peace and love. We, the people of the church, make mistakes. Yes, some bishops are going to get in trouble for some of those mistakes. Even bishops that have eloquent voices and speak of higher things will still have to face temporal consequences for mistakes. That happens. And maybe it's true. Some of the really guilty ones are going to get away with things in this life that they shouldn't. And some of the more mild ones whose mistakes might have good reasons, good intentions, are going to be punished unjustly or too extremely. And that's sad. But we are called to even evangelize to our bishops and to our Pope and to say, keep the path, come back. 
follow God. We love you. God loves you. We're called to remind them to be holy, whether it's a bishop, whether it's the Pope, whether it's a preacher, whether it's a Mormon, whether it's a Baptist, whether it's an atheist. We're called to live by example, not by judgment. Do God's will. Follow his commandments. And if you are merciful enough and loving enough and people follow you because you're consistent enough, then maybe you'll save someone's soul. But you won't do it by having a popular YouTube channel or a very popular TikTok.